Okay, so this was a Hansi 575, um, which the client wanted us to um, do a copper coat treatment on. And uh, we moved the boat from uh, the boat yard for lift out. As is common with larger yachts, um, very often the backstay has to be slackened off to enable the travel lift to lift the boat safely, which is what we, uh, we did. Um, there's no danger. We always make sure that the, 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 uh, uh, the back of the mast is secured before we release the backstay, um, so there's no danger of uh, damage to the boat and then the boat can be safely lifted in the travel lift without any damage to the rigging. As is common with um, boats or yachts with uh, uh, drop down bow thrusters and stern thrusters, we left the thrusters down when we lifted the boat so that the uh, thruster insides could be cleaned with the pressure washer before treatment. The boat was then chocked up uh, safely, uh, ready for us to do our work. Uh, we had to remove any residual barnacles from the hull because uh, uh, these do not react very well to the, uh, um, the, the blasting process. Then we masked the water line to ensure that we didn't blast the gel coat above the water line because we're just blasting the old anti-fouling from the bottom of the hull. We prepared our blasting equipment with the um, aluminium silicate, which is the blasting media we use, um, with a high pressure, a high volume compressor. We removed the anodes from the boat before blasting so that we could ensure we could obtain them ready for when the boat's finished before it goes in the water. We then have to sheet the boat up with uh, plastic um, to contain the dust when we are blasting the boat. Obviously we don't want contamination to other boats in the boatyard around us. So we have to religiously make sure that we provide a good tent uh, into which we can do the blasting. Once the boat is fully covered with the plastic tent, we can then secure it to the ground, begin the blasting process. The blasting is undertaken inside a, a fully sealed air supplied breathing unit to ensure the safety of the operative and he's fed with fresh air that is filtered to ensure that he's able to continue working. Constant watch has to be kept on the plastic because if any holes appear in the plastic, um, dust can escape and contaminate the, the rest of the yard and we have to be sure not to, uh, uh, to molest the other boats around us. Once the blasting process is finished, we then have to remove the plastic and collect all of the media that we've used together with the anti-fouling that we've blasted off. We obviously inspect the hull for any damage or problems that have been shown up by the blasting. We then have to clear up, remove the, the, the spent media, um, which we have to dispose of according to the law in Spain, which can cost up to 300 euros a tonne. We then start the priming process. Uh, the keel of the boat needed some extra work and we agreed with the owner that we would put several layers more uh, epoxy primer on the keel to ensure that it was well insulated before applying the copper coat. We also um, uh, applied uh, two coats of epoxy primer um, to the hull before we applied the copper coat just to make sure that the hull was properly secured. The first coat of copper coat when it's applied always looks very thin, but it's not something to worry about because the whole process of copper coat is that you need to build up the four or five layers to get the required amount of copper coat per square meter onto the boat. 
and it's better to apply it in, in thinner layers rather than heavier layers. After the second and third coat, it starts to look much more uh, solid uh, and not so thin. And then with the fifth coat, the treatment is complete. It's only ever possible to mix one litre of copper coat at a time because of the drying time. And so we have to be constantly mixing and making sure that everything is fresh before it's applied. Areas that are not easy to get to with a, a roller are applied by brush. The, this is the fifth coat going on now for the completion of the process. Um, and, it, and all of the five coats were applied in the same day, which is, they have to be with copper coat because copper coat needs to bond. All of the layers of copper coat need to bond to each other to make a secure and, and long-term um, treatment for the hull. The propeller uh, was treated with Prop Speed, which is a, a two-year anti-fouling, silicon-based anti-fouling for propellers, especially for propellers. Um, and uh, a new anode was fitted to the propeller at the same time. We were then asked to polish the hull, um, and as you can see, the, uh, the, the, the grey gel coat finish of the hull was quite matte, and the polishing has done a, a very good job in bringing it up to a, a nice shiny finish. Um, uh, similar to the factory finish that you would have got when the boat was new. The finished job with the propeller, the hull, new anodes. We actually fitted new underwater lights for the owner as well and changed some of the seacocks. Once the treatment's finished before the boat is relaunched after three days drying, um, the uh, copper coat needs to be activated, which basically means that we need to remove the shiny surface. Boat is relaunched. First thing we do is check the any work that we've done on the boat which involves seacocks or, or, or entrances into the boat under the water line. Um, we always check those when the boat goes in the water first uh, while it's still suspended to make sure that there are no problems or errors. Um, we do have a 99% su uh, success rate with fitting seacocks so we really don't have too much to worry about. Uh, the owner was present at the relaunch um, uh, with his family and uh, he was very happy with the finish that was achieved with the boat and the work we'd done. Uh, the boat was relaunched, uh, the backstay was reinstated uh, so the boat was safe. Um, he then left um, the, uh, the boatyard with his family um, to start his summer holiday in the Mediterranean.